Have you ever had moments of really serious self-doubt where you feel like you're just fooling everybody and there's this sort of hollowness that comes over you like, oh, they think I'm all that and I'm really none of that? That's called the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome was named in 1978. I had to look it up because I thought, wait, I think I remember when that started floating around in the culture. And at first, the idea was that the only people who felt like imposters were women, that it was unique to women. And there was sort of this underlying, maybe something's wrong with women because they feel this way. That's just not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Lots of people have feelings of self-doubt. Lots of people have the imposter syndrome. The first thing I can tell you is you are not alone. In fact, I kind of think the people I like the best are the ones who seem to have that every once in a while and need some reassurance about it. If you think about the people who seem like they never have self-doubts, I don't know, do you really want to be their bestie? Not me. So I do want to be your bestie. And here are some things I can share after 50 years of wrestling with this, not how to conquer it, but how to deal with it if you feel like an imposter, like you have some mask on. First thing I can share with you is that accomplishments don't cure it. For a long time, I thought if I only accomplish this or I only accomplish that, then I won't feel like an imposter. Let's use writers as an example. I took a writing class and I thought, oh, there are people here who are real writers. And I thought they were real writers because they'd had things published. So then I thought, okay, okay, I'm going to feel like a real writer when I have things published. And then I got things published and that didn't cure it. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to be a real writer once I get an agent. Got an agent. That didn't cure it. She believed in me, uh, but I still thought, oh, here's just one more person I'm fooling. I'm really not a writer. So then I sold my first book to a big publishing house for what was then a ton of money and would be a ton of money now because the big publishing houses are all shutting down. And I thought, okay, now I'm a writer. Somebody believes in me and they gave me money. Nope, still felt like an imposter. And it just went on and on and on. And even though I'd published two books, I have published two books, lots of magazine articles, I've written a lot. If you bumped me in the middle of the night and said, are you a writer? I would probably say, mm, I'm not sure. Because in my mind, there's still real writers and me. So I can tell you without a doubt, accomplishments are not going to fix it because you're just going to set the bar higher, right? I'm going to be real at doing whatever I'm doing when I get to this. And then when you get to that, you're not going to value it so much. So don't put on your to-do list, accomplish this because you think it's going to cure the imposter syndrome. I promise you, and I'm sorry to tell you, it's not. So the second one underneath feeling like an imposter is this question of who are you comparing yourself to? It's, they're always kind of connected, right? I feel like an imposter because, right? I feel like an imposter at putting myself together because my friend does a much better job. You know, I feel like an imposter at public speaking because I went out and took a class in it and I'm not the best one in my class. Oh, I think I'm pretty good at doing makeup, but I'm not really all that because there's so many people on Insta who do it better. I even had imposter syndrome about dog training. When I saw the, um, the TikTok videos that went viral with the dogs that all went to their own seat and sat down on the bus so they could sit together and go for a hike and they knew <laughs> which seat was there. And I thought, oh man, my dog, no, she just, she wouldn't. And she wouldn't because I was feeling like an imposter as a dog trainer to my dog because sometimes my dog just does whatever she pleases, right? So I can make up imposter syndrome on any aspect of my life, depending what I want to compare myself to. I'm not the best at anything of anyone I know. I'm not the best budgeter. I'm not the best cook. I'm not the best whatever. And so until we get to where we can um, just tear down those 
comparisons of I'm an imposter because I'm not, then we're going to suffer from it. One of the things I've seen actors do that I, I think addresses that, I notice that Kate Blanchett always does it. She always expresses her gratitude, thanks, and appreciation of the other people in the category. So she won Best Actress, Why These Things Need to Be Gendered is another story, but she won Best Actress at BAFTA, the British Film Awards. And it was a phenomenal performance in Tar that she won it for. And she took a moment to thank the other people who were up for the award, saying, you know, it's kind of luck and the weather and who's judging and who can judge anyway. So she appreciated her competition. And in doing that, she made it kind of a community instead of a ladder. If you can convert a ladder into a community and you're all sort of after the same thing, then you're not going to beat yourself up so much. Obviously, that's not true if you're on a team sport. On that one, you're looking at a ladder, but you can still have community with your teammate and let yourself appreciate yourself for what they appreciate you for. So just notice, am I a fraud and a failure because I'm not as good as somebody else? I bet you are thinking that. The third point, in feeling like a fraud is to try to move your focus on who you serve. This is a wonderful thing that Jeanette, my media manager, does for me. I can get my knickers totally twisted over, oh, I should have more subscribers. I need to have more views. I need to have better numbers. And she will lovingly look at me and say in an indirect Jeanette way, yes, it's about who are you serving? Are you influencing anyone? Are you really helping anyone with his, her, their life. When my mind is on that, when my mind is on the the person, the one person you, I'm supposed to be serving, then I'm not thinking about I'm an imposter because I don't have a YouTube plaque. I may never have a YouTube plaque. If I just made your day a little lighter, that's my reward. So if you wanted to help me with my imposter synd syndrome, what you do would do is comment, Granny, you saw me. I'm trying to see you. I'm trying to reach you. I want to be there for you. And if you say to me, yes, I felt seen, huh, that takes away the imposter syndrome because all that stuff that doesn't matter goes away. What matters in my role now is you. And if you think about who am I trying to reach? Who am I trying to influence? Is this really about my kids? you know, who in this moment matters to me, that will also get some of it to quiet down a little bit. Here's my last point. I'm not sure I should give it a number because it's my personal experiment, but I want to share it with you because uh, we're in this together and I'm still working on it. So lately, I've been down the rabbit hole of trying to understand thought. You know, where do thoughts come from? I've been talking a lot to a neuroscientist about the idea of thoughts, mind, brain. And when a thought comes up that's an imposter thought, which will come up particularly now about YouTube, you know, who do you think you're fooling? You're not really doing this. I will ask that voice, who's talking in there? <laughs> really? Like, who is it who's manifesting this plot? Who are you telling me this? Can I figure it out? I'm very curious about, are you a parent who's been long gone? Are you some voice from the internet? Who, who are you to be telling me this? And I don't know the answer. I don't know who's talking in there, but I do think as I understand that somebody is giving me what my karate since I, since I used to call Momo information. Momo information is bad information. If they're giving me Momo information, I can ignore it. I can tell them what people say in the South. Hush, right? I can say what my Canadian friends say. Thank you. I'm good. <laughs> All nice ways to say shut up. <laughs> which I would say if I were still a New Yorker. So see if you can, instead of trying to escape it, just look at it, listen to it. Who's talking in there? It's a really interesting question. And I would love for you to tell me um, how you do with this experiment because I'm deep in it. Anyway, I hope, uh, I hope I have been a little bit of service to you with the imposter syndrome. My main point is you don't want to make it shut up and die. For one thing, it's not gonna. It's gonna be with you as long as you're around. So the idea is how can you work with it? How can you make the imposter syndrome and that voice that tells you that you're not that, or you're not all that, or you're not really that. How can you make that voice partner with you in a way that's productive? Maybe for both of you. Bye.